I want to talk to you about building things, whether or not you have the tools. So I am Matthew Sanabria. I'm an SRE at Cockroach Labs. You can find me at my website or that handle. So I have five plus years of Go experience. I also am a pretty good home renovator, but I only work on my own stuff because don't hire me. I, I don't want to do it after work. It's a lot of work, but it's good. But what are we actually going to build? What do I want you to build, right? So I'm, I'm trying to motivate you to get out of that habit of saying, what should I build and just get to building. So you should build, honestly, anything. But we're going to focus on building not a production application, but we're going to focus on building a kitchen. So I'm going to relate software engineering to home renovation. This is your production code, right? It's functional. It's outdated. Not the most efficient. This is also my kitchen when I moved into my house. And it needed a lot of work, especially since my wife is a chocolatier and she needed not for my uh, countertops, but, you know, quartz countertops. But I'm not a contractor, right? I'm not like a home renovator. My tool, my toolbox really consisted of these tools that maybe anybody can have, right? An average person has some or most of the tools that you see here. And it's no different in software, right? Think about what's in your toolbox as an engineer. What do you know? What skills do you have, right? Think about that. Maybe some of you are saying, I only know Go, right? I, this is the only tool in my toolbox. And I'm here to tell you that's fine. That's enough to build. So the system is going to change, right? My kitchen is going to change regardless of whether or not I work on it or not. The question you need to ask yourself is, are you going to be a part of that change and learn from it? So you have some options to decide of when you're going to build something. You can either do nothing, right, and not learn anything about your system, not grow your skills. You can hire somebody else to build something for you, but that's going to cost you money. You're also not going to learn any skills. And I didn't have money to do this for my kitchen because I just bought a house and I didn't have money. Uh, but you can also build things yourself. Right? It's going to take some more time, it's going to be slower, but it'll save you money and it'll also like up-level yourself and your skills. So let's get to work. So right off the bat, I had to demo the kitchen, obviously, right? Take it down to the bones, scope out the work, to see what I'm even working with. This is you going into your code, seeing what's there. Then you start to plan what major features or changes you want to add. This is me scoping out where I want the electrical, like the, the hi-hats in my house, seeing what, what the electricals look like. And then after that, you start prototyping things, right? You wire up a few things, you make some changes, you test if things work. It's not in its final place yet, but you're testing. So, of course, just like with code, just like with renovations, things happen. There's always something that goes wrong, right? Let's talk about these scenarios. So scenario number one, suppose you have all the tools you need to do your job, but you just don't have enough knowledge to complete the job. What do you do? Well. This was me in my house, right? I had to rewire the entire kitchen. The old wiring was in the incorrect gauge. There was multiple circuits being shared and they were, keep, they were getting blown constantly, right? Like think of your tightly coupled code. And there's really just not enough lighting. So like, what do I do, right? What specs do I have to follow to install my electrical? How does this even work? And what did I do here? I consulted the docs, right? I literally went to the National Electric Code and was like, what are the specs for my kitchen? And I learned like that I needed to have the, the countertop outlets like two feet apart and separate circuits and blah, blah, blah. But Go has this too, right? Go has its own version of the National Electric Code. It has great documentation. And you should use it to like learn your new tools, right? You have package.go.dev. You have the actual language spec. You have Go doc that you can like generate documentation from your own code. But that's only helpful if you're writing documentation comments in the first place. And you are doing that, right? Right? But the point I'm trying to make here is that documentation adds new tools to your toolbox. Let's look at another scenario. When you have wrong tools, you have a bad implementation usually, right? So let's see what happens. Somebody here used the wrong tools and put galvanized steel pipes as drains. Galvanized steel pipes rust. So I took them out, and I replaced them with PVC. And I wrote a test case. I filled this bathtub up with water, and I let it drain. And my new PVC pipes did not leak. But since the water was flowing so freely now, it, there was a backup further down the pipes that did leak and flooded my kitchen. This happens in your code all the time, right? You see that thing that you want to change, and you change it, and you break something else. This is going to happen, but you learn about the system, and you keep going. So Go has great tools for troubleshooting. It has Go test, pprof tools. You delve if you're into debuggers. 
you should be using these tools to understand your system and write your own tests to find that, that behavior. Uh, the point I'm trying to make here is verify that your tools work with correct testing. Scenario number three, and this is the one that hurts me the most, so I'm very sorry. You have the wrong tools, the wrong you don't have the knowledge, and you have no time. This happened to me when I was working in my kitchen. I discovered my primary beam for my house was termite rotten. It was sealed up so we couldn't find it in the inspection. So I checked the git blame, and of course, the previous homeowner is no longer around, so I can't ask them about this. So this was a blocker. And I needed to hire people to fix this, right? I leaned on people that had expertise that I didn't have. But the thing I did differently is I observed their work and I noticed what they were doing and what tools they were using. In, in Go, right, in, in software, there's times where you should actually say no to Go. I'm going to pause. I'm looking at the time, too. So um, there's times where Go isn't the best tool to use. And it's OK to say no to Go. It's not always a good fit, right? If you're doing front end or if you have some existing requirements to deal with, you probably shouldn't use Go. But if you're out of your depth and you don't have the tools, you should seek help from more experienced engineers and observe their work and learn from them. So the point I'm trying to make here is know when to seek out an expert and observe their work. So you might be asking, did my kitchen ever get done? Sure did. Put up some sheetrock, spackled it, painted it, primed it got it going, looks beautiful, it's all there, everyone's happy. So that's what I wanted to make. And the point I want to make here is this is your system. This is your finished system. But when I look at my kitchen, I don't just see the finished kitchen. I see the ductwork that I put in behind the wall for the range hood. I see the outlets that I put. I see the blocking that I put up to support my cabinets. And what I'm trying to say is go out there and build things because building helps you learn more about your system and it helps you learn more about what, how you can be creative when you don't have the tools, how you can lean on experts in your industry for their tools, and it helps you understand that the greatest tool in your toolbox is you. And you should be like a tool, you have to maintain it and sharpen it, right? So do that to yourself and grow. Thank you.